Well, welcome fellow travelers. Your traveling buddy here coming your day from Grass Lake, Michigan. And I'm here today for a festival that I heard about that's going on today called the Pioneer Day at Waterloo Farm and Dewey School Museum. So that sounded interesting to me, so I figured to come check this out. So travel. Farm Museum. This is a Pioneer Day. Like, I just heard about it. Just learned about it on Facebook. Now it looks like they're having a Christmas thing too. I might have to put that on my list. Maybe come out here for Christmas. The Christmas thing. But yeah, this is like a little museum here, like a historical museum. And you know me, I like my little historical places. See all the kind of farm stuff out here, and they actually got the things set up inside the barn there. The lady in a pair of clothes right there. Actually, selling like little craft things out here, little pumpkins decorated up. It's a small two dollars and large five dollars. Kind of cool little things. These little gnomes. Look at that. Actually made out of like a stick. It's kind of a neat idea. Look at that the bigger one there. We got these people making actual little like fall wreaths. Look at that. It's pretty cool. I will do what I need to do. Little handmade little crafts. One of these a Christmas one. Like you know, I'll do Kitty, I'll give one to Jan and one to Steve. Pepper wreath. Ten dollars. Not bad. I'll give them some room so they can Then here, look at it. See all the old farm equipment there. So this is an actual old barn. The old building is called the granary. And this is where they used to keep all the Back in the day, they used to keep all the feed for the animals right inside there, but now it's a gift shop. This guy makes like metal crafts and stuff. He takes like old, um, that's a gas tank, you know, for your grill. He made it into like a pumpkin. That one's all painted. We got some over here painted up. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. There's just enough oil, and it doesn't have that. Out here, they got the actual machinery with the corn husker. See, that's shucking corn. That. Just feeds it right in there. Turn it. That's what they used to do it back in the day. Guys, are demonstrating right. how you do it. Another version, he says that's how they get all the kernels off. See, there's the kernels down there. You feed the corn in there. Yeah, I guess so. And show how it works. See? And then drop down in that bucket down there. See? Look at that. Pretty cool. Thank you. Feeds that in there like that. Like, can I try? Takes the corn, throws it right in that chute. That's how they made rope back in the day. Look at that. So that's the machinery. You tie it all in there. 
job. And you turned it. And made rope. Beautiful day. That's how they used to do it. Yes, she just got here. We're gonna make the rope. So okay, it's taut. Start turning it. Or am I going the wrong way? Nope. There it goes. Look at that. Look at that. Made a piece of rope. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Made my own little rope. They actually gave that to me. So that's pretty cool. So I made some rope. demonstrating how they make apple cider back in the day. There's the machinery there. <laughs> Crush up the apples. Make an actual apple cider. You yeah, actually try some. They have the old workshop. But, uh, right and, I, and I will do things like, you know, I get the heavier steel out. I make my towel bars. You know? <laughs> typical farm shop. So, he was teasing me. He said, sure. So they got all kinds of stuff in there. They got a little blacksmith in there. He's a blacksmith in there. Doing his stuff. He's got the, all kinds of tools in there. The lanterns over there in the corner. This guy's showing her how to plane the wood and all that. The planer. That's called a transitional. Takes that. It was a lot of planes the wood. It was pretty, but it was his tool. Got to make tongue and groove. Oh, yeah, he, made, he made that. See, they like, that's no, cool. made by Sandusky Tools. Oh, okay. Long that's, the, that's the tongue side, and that's the groove side. That's cool. And there's the product. That's how they make it. Ah. Because he said they make it back in the days. Yep. Every stick of flooring in that house was made that way. Right there, that house there. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Over here, we got the blacksmith. You know, there's some more blacksmiths over here. Show them how they do a lot of stuff. So this guy's making a butterfly. This guy's just stirring up the coal. I got another one coming out of Oh, look at this. You a little piggy. Or are you a bee? <laughs> Hey there! You cute little thing. Someone's making soap. This is how they used to make soap. And it's like these protein fat. What's that? Is vinegar? Olive oil. Olive oil. And just water. And it's like, it's pretty cool. It weighs it all and all that. Just makes a little piece of soap. This is how they cook it right there, this is how they cook it all up. Over here we got the oh, 1861 Navy Serial 51. This is the antique guns, basically. It's like, we got a bunch of antique guns right here. It's that old gun. Look at the old rifle right here. Make it last better against the soul. Oh wow, look at that gun. Yeah. And uh, they only wound up with uh, making a hundred of them. Yeah. Cold. Didn't work, out didn't work out the way they planned. Right. Now this is this little that, boat uh, right here. That. We used in the Civil War that is where cool. personal weapons were the people. Ivory? They were Maybe made out of ivory. Oh, it is. I made it. It's made out of ivory. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Made out of a piece of ivory. Wow, that is cool. That one's cool. You have the ice house. See, this is where they used to keep the ice back in the day. Because they didn't have refrigerators way back when. So this is where they kept the ice. See? This is where they... Got the tongs up there, he grabbed the ice. So they used to collect that stuff during the winter. See, that's how they used to do it. Go out on the lake, cut into the ice. 
and then store it right in here. So the year. Look at that sled. And trust me, here in Michigan, you get a lot of ice. Well, I'm sure they've had an endless size. There's a saw right there. They used to cut into the lake. Here, that was the refrigerator. See that? And you stick the ice in there. See? The ice in there, and then you just put your food in there. See, there's eggs, milk. So the, the block of ice would go in here, and you know, your food would go over there. We have an actual representation of a log house, what it used to work back in the day. That's how they see. That's how they used to make them. See how they notch it. And, is just logs and then you put the mark mortar in the middle keep cold out it's an actual log cabin I don't know if I want to go in there it says Dr. Budsworth tooth extraction done in the ne neatest and best manner okay I don't <laughs> here we are inside the cabin Look at that. Well, all kinds of stuff there. The bottles, the fireplace. Look at that. Oh, look at this gentleman here. I think he's the doctor. Old brakes right here. It's an old style rake. Pick right there. Oh, look at the old rolling pin up on the wall. The guy's the doctor. Look at that. Demonstrating. Okay, you ever see some of the cats? Not because they spray her. Well, I have cats here. Walk right outside the one. Stone. Come here, young man. We're going to pretend you have a broken arm, He's okay? Push. And your dad brings you in. Look. And I'm going to, I don't have any x ray vision. I'm actually going to employ my skills as a bone setter. And I'm going to move that bone around in there so that I can feel this crack in there. And you're going to hear a test called crepitus. That's it. The noise two bones make when they're scraping at each other. It kind of makes my teeth go right there a little bit. I'm going to snap it back together. And then with the help, I'll have someone helping me. I'm going to put this out around here really tight. I've just set your broken arm. Is that good? It doesn't hurt so much anymore. And I might have a couple of these strings. I might have a couple of these strings, or I just might have one of them. And I've set his bone. Hmm. And guess what? These actually do work quite effectively. So, and he'll have, he'll have that on for a week. And your dad brings you back. And guess what? Your arm will start be healing. We can take it off after about two weeks. But I'll check you after one week. Sound good? So I do. Here we got what they called the bakehouse. Called the bakehouse. The bakehouse was used during the summer to keep the constant heat of baking out of the house to keep the kitchen cook stove free to make meals in the Germany. Every farm could have a bake house in the village. There would be central oven. The all could share on the floor to the great uh, grindstone or the floor mill. So yeah, they used to so they cook outside during the summer when it gets real hot. It's warm inside the bakehouse. Look at that. And I can understand why they would uh, want to do it out here, not in the house. Never heard of a bakehouse before, to be honest. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're quite uh, common in Europe. The early family came from Germany. And um, I think every German farm family probably yeah. had a bakehouse like There's this. There's your oven right there. So, um, it's the oven. It's... Uh, there's just brick and concrete in there. Right now, there's no fire. 
uh, in the oven. We started a fire last night and kept stoking. Oh, wow. So it's still warm in here from last so, night. Uh, wow. Well, no, from this morning. We oh, from this morning. Go, okay. We let go all night. Uh, we kept, people kept stoking it all night. And so this morning we shoveled out all the hot coals and ashes. Wow. And, um, then we uh, put these fire bricks in. I'll open it up in a minute. We put these fire bricks in in the empty oven, which is hot, and um, put our cookie trays on top. And um, so the heat is sort of in the back where the chimney is and on the sides where the bricks are. And so right in the center of the oven, it's cooler. So what I have to do is I have to rotate these cookies. So you can see, if you see there. She's like to make cookies in we there. We have, I'm just going to test this. Oh, those aren't ready to be not, turned not yet. Done yet. So then I'm going to, at a certain point, I'm going to rotate them, switch them and rotate them so they, so they bake evenly. That's cool. And then finish them off on top, as you can feel. Feel the temperature there. Oh here, yeah. Like oh, right down here, lower. This is cooler up here than it is here. And evidently, the way they used to tell temperature was count how long you can hold your finger on there. <laughs> and you just use wood, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we just, just use, use wood. wood. We had we had bigger logs, but um, right. If if we have to start, if it gets too cool and we have to start a second fire, we'll just put smaller pieces in because we want it to, you know. That's just, pretty cool. Just to, uh, well, thank you for that. Yeah. Now that's why I like coming to places like this. I've never heard of a bakehouse before. That's that was pretty interesting. Huh? This guy is a clock maker. Look at first guy to mass produce. He's a clock clocks. maker. The reason they made them okay, out of wood got the, is because brass. The thing on his eye kind of reminds me of the guy from that movie. It's hard to come uh, out. So they said was the night before Christmas a little bit. We will, we will so make, make that clock. Hmm. He's showing how they made clocks. And this years. clock over here is from 1825 and it has a wooden works movement. Oh, really? Wow, look at that. Huh. 1820s. So I've got some early uh, American pocket watches. You've heard of Algin, yep. Waltham. Mm -hmm. uh, Waltham started in 1857. And Here we got. And like so, the pelts, uh, they show the pelts and could not the tell hunting and stuff like that. Those Maybe they're out of rifle. Could, they could tell the musket. The 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 ball. Walk on the wild side. Come over here, we have French bread. Here. Here. They even show you how they made the canoe. <laughs> By the time he got to this site, so those are the snowshoes. Look at those snowshoes. They definitely give those a lot of use he was around here. Very robust. I'm sure. He went on himself and discovered. It. This guy's making sugar. whiskey. Look at Simple that. sugar. Mm -hmm. But in the case of uh, some of the single malt scotches and things like that. You absolutely have to have to make the beer before you can make the. Uh, oh, actually, it's beer. He's making beer. I thought it was whiskey. Making beer, and trust me, back in even today, like beer was a big factor. It was a settlement of America.
one thing a lot of people don't know about him. I mean, I learned that in history. That's why I, I loved history back when I was in school. And, you know, America technically was started because, you know, they were on the Mayflower and they ran out of beer. So they stopped here. I, I, well, I'm not here, but I mean, they stopped where they landed, you know, by James, where the Jamestown is and all that to make beer. The military, they got a demonstration of the military here. Got all the flags. There's the Michigan flag, American flag. We've been here 20 years. You guys got very clothes. Look at that soldier right there. Showing you all the stuff. This stuff here. He was gun number one. These actual things from back then, or are these um, recreations? Uh, the, obviously the musket and the bayonet are replicas, but so the, these are what the captains would have looked like, obviously. Um, you got the butter knife, the confederate cavalry, not confederate butter knife, um, confederate uh, artillery, sharpshooters for the Union would be the green, it's also a forager's cappy version. You got forager's cappy Union, uh, that would be a Zouave, a Zouave officer's cappy. That is actually an actual 1865 Gar medal that they would have gotten. That is an 1863 coin down there in the little paper. Coin down there. Is that actual money? Or is that um, money's not real, but it's just, uh, you know what I mean, to make sure. It shows you what it looked like. Yeah. And then this, these are buckshots found on the battlefield. Oh wow. So small. Yeah, these were found in Gettysburg. Really? Mm -hmm. There's a little bullet there. And then that is what they would look like. And then I have another bullet here. It's a .69 caliber bullet is in here. This was found in the battlefield of Gettysburg as well. Wow. I always wanted to go to Gettysburg. I go there twice a year. That's awesome. Thank you. Yep. What the guys used to have to wear right there. So their so uniform. The gun. Okay. Oh, God. Got yeah, another yeah. one of this guy. <laughs> There's a uniform <laughs> there. <laughs> Jacket. That's yeah. a great coat. Those would go over so that the men were cold or anything, or if it was winter or snowing. Trust me, around here, you probably got to yell at you out of that well, the, puppy. The, the sad thing about it is, is that in the summertime, when they wore all this wool, they would carry this stuff oh with them. And in the winter, yeah. in the summertime, they would start discarding stuff along the sides of the road oh. to, to lighten their load. Of course, if the Confederate soldiers came along, they picked it all up because they didn't have it. All right. But then in the wintertime, a lot of the soldiers, then they regretted it because they threw it out because they didn't want to carry it in the summer. So, because yep. this is what they wore. They wore this type of uniform they wore year-round. They didn't have a summer or, or a spring. Right. Or they, they wore one type of uniform all exactly. year. Exactly. And it yep, gets and trust me, it gets cold out. around here. Kara, come and tie it around. Okay, Kara, is yeah, it, the is there, you want to do the bandage, dressing? Bandage. So they're doing the dressing, and then you can do the bandage. And we got lots of different ones here. Look down the soldier. Ouch. Good job, girl. Ouch, oh, that hurts. Just Ouch. wrap it around. <laughs> Ouch! All right, Natalie, you've got the other one. <laughs> they're, they're helping you. You got another dressing? Yeah, we got a finger. So the same with the finger. You want to put a dressing on his finger. Just step right up and then you can there. do the bandage part. And then you just put this around. Natalie, can you tie that? And then you just keep, who wants to tie this off and make sure it's tight? You want to do the bottom? Somebody shot it off. And then. That was a nice of them, was it? He may have been giving them, oh, I shouldn't say that, should I? There's a gesture men give to each other when they're mad at each other, right? Is that his, yeah, that's yes. that finger too, isn't that it? That's very smart. So sometimes it's probably not smart to get them mad at you when you're, uh... Okay, and then once we got him all dressed and bandaged, go ahead and have him down, and then we would transport him to the hospital. So if each person right, want to grab a corner, grab a corner, there you go. And there you go. Like that. And this is called a litter. So we're transporting him to the hospital or a buggy to, or a wagon up, to take him. And then we'll take him over by the flags and put him right down there. And that's what we call the litter carry off the battlefield. Just carrying him off the battlefield. Lay him down there. Basically where the hospital would be. Did anybody know 
So his leg is broke. So what we got to do is make sure. Oh, this one's got to break too. We got to keep it from getting more damage to the nerves and muscles and tearing because that bone's all loose in there. So what we would do is uh, put a splint down. You mean we didn't shoot him? So we would take nope. uh, him out of his misery. <laughs> oh, that's the horse. They got a rifle there. We could use a rifle. You want it here? I mean, can I just take a picture? Yeah, that was something, okay. right something okay. steady that would lock that into place so that it would not cause any more damage. Can anybody? Is there more bandages over yep, there? there can we get some in here? We'll there's a whole bunch of them over there. So there's one right here too that he broke. Can you feel that? He feel in there. See that break right there? Can you feel that? You can probably see it too. If we can get his leg up there. Here you are, sir. Okay, there we go. So we, so we're improvising this plant for uh, to secure that uh, leg so it doesn't. Uh, so Woody, you're in bad shape. So. Yeah, he sure is. But we'll get you home to your family, though. We won't let you. So that's the same concept. So does anybody want to? So you secure around this. Avery, did you get to try to do any of the bandages earlier? Yeah, we're gonna try to tie one. So go ahead and tighten so you guys that down. Tie on his split so it doesn't move. Tighten this down so that it doesn't cause any more yeah. damage. So Aaron, and Keaton, you guys can you try to wrap. Yeah. Logan too. I'm not sure what. Well, Slayer, come on. 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 And then if you guys are Girl Scouts, do you know on uh, nursing bandages, they tend to, so they wrap, they do a more neater, have you seen this down like that, where they kind of wrap it, and wrap it, and wrap it, and then they would split this and then tie it off like that. So they do more of a wrap type, but for us, we just do the dressing, put the dressing on and the bandage. Same with this, we improvise yeah, they were doing these. Yeah, that's that's no what you're problem. doing in the field, right? Yes, okay. and then when they go to the hospital, then the doctors would, uh, the surgeons, uh, the army always had engineers and chaplains and surgeons, and then the surgeons would evaluate and say, well, he shouldn't have been giving them the uh, gestures that he was doing, <laughs> but that's a clean break, and they just either uh, cauterize it. Have you ever heard of that, cauterize? So what they would do, they would take just a regular surgeon's knife, warm it up, and then they would press it right on that wound. And it would it would burn, but it would cauterize all those open uh, capillaries and veins and stuff like that. And it would stop bleeding. Because again, your whole goal is to stop that bleeding. And then uh, if they did, so say uh, in this wound right here, if it broke the bones in there, this was before x-rays and uh, antibiotics and stuff. So they would do an evaluation. If it was broke up there quite a bit, and there was all, you could feel that loose bone and all those pieces in there, they would go ahead and, and remove that. Because uh, as long as they could remove that all that broken up mess there, they couldn't splint it or uh, fix it like we can now through modern antibiotics give you so it wouldn't get infected so it's all those moving pieces so that's where they would amputate and they would take that off so he would lose his arm uh, if he uh, if that got all broken up in there because there there was no way they could fix it like we can now they can pin it because they can see the x-rays and see how many pieces it is and then they can pin it back then they didn't have x-rays because x-rays doesn't That's why in uh, this time frame there was a lot of amputations. If there was broken up bone, rather than taking a risk of infection, they would go ahead and amputate. Yes. That's why they called Dr. Sawbones. Yes. Have you ever heard the term bite the bullet? Yeah, so when, when they would uh, amputate the arm, uh, then they would try to tie off, and they had uh, surgical thread that they would tie off the major arteries and veins. And then the capillaries, you could just use just the bandages as a compression to stop that bleeding. So that's how they would stop bleeding. And then when they did the surgery, they would leave extra skin on there because they wanted, especially if he was a married man, he wanted to be 
looking somewhat decent when he got home, <laughs> even though he was missing an arm, they would take that extra scan and then sew it on there. And that way it would stop the uh, wound from being open and exposed. And that's how they would do an amputation. So it was pretty gruesome, but it would save their lives, you know, and then he would, you know, be able to, at least he would lose the arm, not a leg or uh, both arms or his eyes or something like that. Then you're disabled, you know, but he could actually work and uh, continue to do business with, uh, and it saved his life. So I think I read statistically um, the majority of surgeries of amputations actually they survive. They had a lot of post-surgery uh, infections, but that was mainly because of the battlefield scenario. You would have at that time you'd have tens of thousands of men coming in with injuries, and they just didn't have the time to spend to make sure that the wounds were very clean and they were trying to save their lives as fast as they can so that's where the post-surgery infections but even then the, the men were really good like he was saying uh they called them salt uh saw bones because they were fast at it so they would bring woody in there and they it wouldn't take them no time they'd say they'd slap him on the table and they would cut that off suture it up moving on like assembly line bring the next guy in and then hopefully that quickness keeping your tools clean and moving them fast, you would save a lot of lives because, again, in the battlefields of the Civil War, you would have uh, probably three to 5,000 killed on the battlefield and another approximately 10,000 or more. Like at, at Gettysburg, there was 50,000 casualties. That's bigger than most cities around here. So could you imagine having 50,000 people like Woody here that you've had to see <laughs> sit here and treat for all these wounds? So that's why they they had an assembly line, and they would work all day and night and just keep them going. They did have uh, painkiller and stuff like that, but a lot of times. Pick it up. Used to do it. Yeah, see, so used to whack them with a weird kneecap with that. This one? This is Native Americans, there's like the arrowheads the Indians used to make. What is this? The girl was making an arrowhead. We have the milk cellar, it's called. The milk cellar was built underground to keep it cool in the summer and warm in the winter. A storage for milk and butter only. It was used as a root cellar for vegetables, the onions, and other vegetables that have made it them taste funny. Miss Riley was a good businesswoman because she could hold her butter until the price went up and then sold it to the market in Waterloo. It's like a root cellar, basically, that's what a lot of people call them. Cool. It's kind of steep. It says, oh, watch your step. So here we are inside. Got all the things there to keep your butter in there, or milk. kinds of stuff in here. I say that probably kept your butter right in there. Good job. Lady here, she's been demonstrating how they made butter. So that's how they make butter. So you keep pounding on that until it turns into butter. Look at that, ladies. See, you could actually test it. See, you could actually have some butter. See what it tastes like. See, that's homemade butter right there. Mm. That's pretty good. We have the original wooden windmill. It's 
called the wooden original building to the farm museum. It was constructed by the Riley family shortly after they came to the farm. When mill were provided water for the milk cellar to keep the milk and butter cool. It was also provided drinking water for the family, farm, animals, and gardens. <laughs> this windmill was a sign of pro uh, prosperity for every farmer could also afford to have such a fine example. Right there, there's the well. So, there's the well, and there's the pump. See, just a regular pump. Yeah, and you see that was what used to go up to the windmill. The actual blade is sitting behind it. No, uh, it's not hooked up, but you see so they pump water. It didn't have ru actual running water. Here's a little demonstration right here on the wall. Well, how does it? 23 total well depth. 18 inches of to water, five water depth. Oh, with the glasses, I don't know what that actually is down there. See, you see how tall this thing was? You see, the blade is not on there anymore. It's actually over here. I noticed that earlier. All right, come on, friends. It's here on the ground. So that's the blade right there to the windmill. Looks like they're looking for donations so they can probably restore it. No. I was showing how they used to make pottery back in the day. And then make a nice flat bottom. I'm going to make a mug for you. Which one is that? Then I switch. And my hands go like this. You see that space between my fingers? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to put that over top of the clay and I'm going to make that space smaller and smaller and smaller. And when I do, the clay is going to get smaller and smaller. And it can't go down because there's a the wheel head here. So where does it go? So I just like with my It goes up, right? Good guess. Watch. But it's so funny because last year I was like, I'm not sure what the badging requires because I wasn't the leader. Yeah. What? <laughs> but what we did was um, I brought molds uh -huh. and we made uh, flat pieces of clay and made impressions in them. And then form the clay over top of the molds. And made uh, small like little sushi plates. This year I'm able to go to a card. Do you have a card? Yep. And then we the second meeting we did uh, we glazed. Finishing pieces here, look at that. Same kind of mug he was just making. See, later he'll put the, the handle on. The actual pats. Look at that. So you make your bread. And looks like bread. Cupcakes. <laughs> oh, look at the Michigan. It's pretty neat. He's spinning wool. Look at that. Husky. A husky. So we spun that. Really? Oh, really? Interesting. Wow, she was just saying she took dog hair and actually oh, spun it. What a beautiful fiber that is. I would have never thought you just spin it from like a. I don't know. That's crazy. Well, in Angora rabbits, you can you just you just brush them out. And yeah, most of the time you can brush them, but in the summertime. 
llamas and alpacas are from the same family. They're camelids. They're very directly related to a camel. The turkey up here. Got the taxidermy turkey sitting in there, right? Big turkey. This is the original farmhouse right here. That old brick on that side, and it's all wood on this side. The Riley Farmhouse. Riley Farmhouse was begun, begun in 1855 and the addition of the bricks. Upon completion of the brick home, the log house was removed and the wooden structure was you see today were completed in the 1880s. The view you see in the above photo is the east side of the house which shows the porch to the sitting room and the Victorian Bay window in the parlor. styles came into vogue, they would incorporate it into the, their home. So there's a picture. The front porch and all that. This girl here, she's washing her socks. That's how you used to do it. They didn't have washing machines. Just have to, have to do it like that. Here's what you do. You go out to just hang it up. Forty or are you on the highway or down? So that's when they didn't have laundry detergent. That was really he's like bar soap. Well, well, for that. Just keep going. Threw another sock in there. Stretch it out and then you put it in the ringer. And you just ring it out. And that's how you do it. And she just takes it and hangs it up. It makes you appreciate a washing machine, doesn't it? <laughs> Those ladies in here cooking. Oh, that looks good. Look at that. Some cabbage in there. Oh. This was their kitchen. Oh, the newest part food. of the farmhouse. The newest part of it? Yep. Yep. How much a plate? Pardon? How much you play? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it's serious. Crib. Right there. We have dinner. You know, yeah. she's got to keep the baby have, right next to her uh, while she's Christmas, cooking. We have a silent auction, and that is one of the items. As you and... Uh, they actually got indoor plumbing. You know, oh, if they you go out, honey, down to the well. the laundry. used to pump it. <laughs> oh, is it water. really? So oh. I think you can actually do it. There's an indoor plumbing right there. That's water. She was just telling me this is the water that comes out of here. It did not come from the well out there. It's, this is the cistern. It's like basically rain water. They have a, underneath the house, they have a tank that collects the rain water. And they, it's only used for cook there for uh, washing, you know, do, doing laundry. And cleaning and stuff like that. And then they had to get the water from the well out there for drinking. The men would have come in from the fields, from the barn. It is it's one of the coolest things in this whole house. <laughs> she was just showing that this is the mud room. 
right here where the guys would come from the farm and they come in and of course they were told to take off their boots and everything like that you know straight their feet and the guy would be tall you know when you're about five foot tall and you see this in the thing here the guy would lean up against the thing like this and scrape his foot with the mud off and there's, there's an imprint in the wood now. I don't know if you can see that right. Oh, there's the bench here. Yeah, from the years that the guys did that. That is cool. Hi there, how are you doing? The ironing board here. Oh, look at the old map. Ingham and Livingston. Wow. It's a whole map of this whole area. So we're in Jackson County right now. And I actually live near Ingham County. This is their dining room area. With this big table. Look at all the food. I'm gonna get close for a picture, but I'm not gonna touch anything. I just like to let you know because I know that's Oh, I would have slept your hands. Yeah, that's yeah. why it's really pretty. I think you can have that. I was like, if I'm just going to touch anything, I'm just going to take a picture. This is a beautiful area here. The wallpaper. This is the dining room. And you got the, uh, right here, you got the, oh, this, this is how they used to heat the house right here. An old picture here, look at that. The old farm. Did you folks go upstairs? Yeah. Oh, shouldn't come back down. Lady with her baby sitting okay. in front. Now you oh, look at this here. here. Won't get to see the pantry. Picture of the farm There's during the winter. Go through this way. I have to. I try to make a point. The warmest places in the house, they'd either be in here or they'd be in the kitchen. And if they were in here, they would play games or study. The mom would knit and rock the baby. Sitting right in front of the fire. <laughs> yeah, and the dad would read. The rest of the house would kind of be blocked off because of how cold it was. Um, so they were usually in here or in the kitchen or dining room or upstairs sleeping. That's pretty Any cool. Questions? No, that's it. Was this an actual bug that they made? or? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, they actually made this rug. Look at that. Oh, even the carpeting. Look at that. That's pretty cool. How they used to do that. Hi, welcome to the See, they're here playing checkers. We were. Nobody's cheating, are they? Um, no. she she won um, twice. Um, during the. <laughs> well, they got one of these things here. Is he? It's got pictures in there. I don't know how it works exactly, but when you look in there, I don't know if I could show it in there. Uh, it's not going to work good. But yeah, you look in there, and it shows a picture. It's like somebody sitting on a front porch. Usually you put, think you're supposed to put a candle in there. Just noticed they say, Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. There's like um, different there's pictures. You turn it. See, they didn't have television and all that. They just sometimes probably looked at that. And play music, play games in here. Another living area. Hello. This is actually Go. the parlor. What the they parlor. Would consider the parlor. So, on the rare occasion when they. Um, had guests, which Salt Lake was for mostly um, more unhappy occasions, like if somebody got funeral sick or, or funeral, um, they would meet in here. And um, so the, it was mostly cold in this room, I understand, and they would run the wood burner only when they had guests. And the kids' room was upstairs, so the kids would welcome the guests because the room would get warmer when the guests were here. Right, and there's like a funeral uh, wreath, isn't it? it like These are actually what I was told. Um, they're made to remember um, right, and the they use their hair, don't they? they? Yes, yeah, they're made the out hair. of their hair. Yeah. 
And sometimes they'd probably even have the, the casket and all that right in here, wouldn't yes. they? Yes, yes, they sure would. I like this. I love this house. I love out here. And there's the front here porch. Here. It's just so nostalgic. My, my grandparents were born in the pioneer days. So. Yeah. Mine too. Here's where they used to do the weaving and stuff like that. And make like blankets like the rug out there. I was just showing. It's probably how they made that right there with that thing. Go upstairs here. Oh, look at the bearskin rug right here. So there's another one of them rugs right there. Oh, look at that old picture. Good and creepy. Oh, guess can't go in there. Pretty. Our faith in heaven. Let's get a picture of Jesus. Oh, look at that guy. Kind of creepy looking. But that's what they used to look like in the one of the major residencies. Now, this is kind of weird. I wonder what this is. You see here, it's like a little. I don't know if it's a piece of paper or something. But, so you got two African guys and a guy sitting in the middle. Dancing. Huh. GM15 Michigan. I don't know. I have to ask somebody about that, what that, what that is. One of the bedrooms, the kid's bedroom. Look at the baby crib there. I believe this is a kid's bedroom. A little, little, no rocking little crib there for the baby doll. Oh, look at those tiny little shoes right there. The tiny little shoes. Yeah, this is definitely a kid's room. And they didn't have much room in here. I mean, that's the wall there, and then that turn. There's the wall there. I mean, not very much floor space. Oh, how you doing? What have we got here? This is the children's bedroom. children's bedroom. Mm -hmm. The this is the bed. Um, the, I'm gonna demonstrate on. It has these ropes at the bottom, and it was made like to s make sure it doesn't fall or like keep in to keep it up. And the mattress was made of both feathers and straw. Straw. And when it was winter, it was very cold here, so they would have to wear layers. And this pipe right here, it would. It's like when it was on. It would be heat, it would bring heat up a little more, but when it was off, it would just be really cold. Um, so this doll is this little girl's look-alike, and uh, this oh, wow. little girl unfortunately died at a very young age because of an unknown disease. And then that girl, um, her picture was given to us by the Ridley Family Auction. And then, this is a soapstone. They would warm this up and then put it at the foot of the bed. And It'll then it would keep warm, yeah. yeah. And then it would keep them warm. And then they would use that for the restroom. Yep, the little chamber pot. So, and then... These were the little girl's clothes, the youngest girl's clothes, and her mother got mad when she started wearing them in the fall because they're dresses, so they were like short and it would be showing her legs, and it got really cold in the fall, so she then she got mad at her mother and just threw them there. Oh. 
Wow. That's it. Do you have any so questions? Do you know how, what she died of? But maybe. Um, we don't have very much information because it happened so long ago. Mm. And this was her doll, huh? Yes. Or make. Uh, yes, that was her doll. Yeah. Anybody ever see any ghosts in here? <laughs> yeah, it feels weird in the playroom for sure. If I get the shivers whenever I go in there. Yeah, who knows? Maybe she's I, still I, here. I don't think it's haunted. I don't. Who knows? I, you never know. We've been... Maybe it's the doll. So, it would just be friendly. <laughs> yeah, we have look like the master bedroom. And they decided uh, this that bed. Mm -hmm. The crib next to the here. bed. They were always the woman's clothing. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't any. No, there's an old dress. Take right. over the right there. farm. So, so they were German immigrants who came in the 1850s. Notice okay. over there, see that looks like a rocking chair, but it's actually a chamber pot underneath here. That was their bathroom. Yes. But Yes, welcome to the um, parents' room, and uh, there's lots going on in this room. This would have been the third or fourth portion of the home that was built, and uh, in this uh, portion, uh, the closet's actually behind you, which we cannot go into, but I always tell you that because everybody thinks this is the closet, and it is not. That would have been like a hobby room, um, but... By the bed here, we have the cradle that where they would have, Ma would have had the, the baby uh, for easy access um, to feed or to change the, the diaper and the comfort. And then we have the parent uh, or adult porta chair, and that would have only been used by the grandparents or guests. Otherwise, you had to use the chamber pot or the outhouse. And this crocheted piece here is called a husher um, for obvious reasons to hush when you're um, using the pot in, at night <laughs> so you don't wake up your spouse. Oh my god! Um, this wardrobe here is um, original to the home. Uh, it was uh, handmade, so if you were to feel the actual wood, um, if you're a wood maker, you could tell that it was hand planed. The um, color of the paint is organic and made from berries around the area and preserved from the glue from like the horse hooves. Um, the quilts in here uh, date uh, as far back as pre-Civil War, and I believe that there's one down in this area that is our oldest one, pre-Civil War. And the um, reason that they would make so many you know, quilts, they would give uh, every visitor a quilt that came. And definitely any soldier that came would get a quilt. Um, you know that uh, your beds at the time were made with hay or feathers, hence the saying, uh, don't let the bed bugs bite. So the reason for lots of quilts, you know, the turnover in the quilts was also for health reasons, I think. So um, now the undergarments that you see, the ladies at the time would have worn layers. And that would even be before they put on their dress. This um, chair here is a shaving chair. And you'll notice at the bottom there's a curved part and a flat part so that the the ladies would have been shaving the men they could put their foot through the flat part and lean the, the men back to go ahead and give them a clean shave or to get their honey-do list done for the day <laughs> I always like to tell folks about this piece here this little glass ball um, the family did originate from Germany and Germans are very well known for glass making and um, can anyone guess what these might be? Christmas bulbs. No? Oil lamps? No. no. <laughs> these are actually a byproduct from their glass making. So when they were done making whatever they were making, um, this was the leftover pieces, and they would make these balls for target practice. The shoots. Um, to shoot. 
to oh, practice so shot. And they would go out in the field, throw them up, and practice like skeet shots. shooting. Skeet oh shooting. God. These were skeet like, shooting. Yes, oh, okay. skeet. And then they could uh, go and get that uh, Thanksgiving turkey for oh, dinner. Wow. <laughs> the other thing I'd like to show you is this keepsake box. Can you notice what's in there? Hair. Hair. Oh, yeah. Hair. And so when folks were getting ready for bed at night, they would take the hair out of their brushes and put them in this keepsake box. And um, back then, they didn't have cameras. Um, you know, this was pre-Civil War time. They didn't have the cameras or anything. So they didn't have pictures for keepsakes of you. But the human hair, the pigment in your, your human hair will last forever. So if you were to pass, they could take your hair and make some sort of artwork piece with it and preserve you and remember you that way forever. So downstairs, if you haven't been in the parlor already, there's one or two um, the, the pieces wreaths, of artwork the wreaths, yep. um, that have human hair in them. So as you pass through here, this is just a hobby room. It's not the closet. The closet's behind you. There is a step, so please be careful. And then the attic is there, and there's a stairway down the access. Thank you. Wait your turn, okay? Got all the hats and stuff. Look at that. And the old shoes. So it was not an original piece, but the original old dressing. Put the dress on there. Live hats. Here we are in the attic. This is where they kept all their stuff. Look at that old dressing. For making dresses and stuff. The wheelchair. Look at the old toy. It's like toy farm machine. Toy tractor. Oh, look at here. There's a taxidermy owl. And a, um, that's a loom. Uh, yeah. Baby crib. I mean, stroller, I mean. That was the stroller. Look at that creepy doll. Oh, Waterloo Band. Look at that, the drum. Holy cow. Look at this room. It's like some military clothes over there. Oh, bike. Look at that bike. Wow. That. Spinning wheel. That couple of spinning wheels. There's a couple of them in there. The old style vacuum. this before this this used to just bring your uh, stuff up here to dry a lot of times see that it's hanging there like your herbs and stuff they used to hang them up here to dry dry out we go back downstairs so we'll right back down into the kitchen area Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. I, that's that's my favorite piece. Oh, it's something. It's it's enormous. Enormous. Yeah. I'll show you why it's or I'll tell you why it's my favorite piece. So you're standing in the pantry right now. And in the pantry is where the food preparation would occur. So you'll notice that we have a pie uh, ready to be put together. The crust is all ready. We've got another crust ready to be put into the pan. And we have pumpkin filling for our pie. And then um, we have this beautiful piece of furniture. This was built by Mr. Rayleigh for Mrs. Rayleigh. It made her job a little bit easier. Dishes were always done in here once the meal was, was done. 
and Mrs. Raley during the day would um, put the plates back out on the dinner table so that when it was time for lunch or dinner, everything was already there. At the end of the day, Mrs. Raley would end up washing all the dishes and they would put they would be put back into the cupboards. In the morning, Mrs. Raley would come down and set the table. And the thing about this cupboard is it opens up this way and it opens up the other way. So she was able to set the table from that direction instead of having to come in here and grabbing the items. Now you'll notice the grain on our, on our um, beautiful piece of furniture. It was done using these, pe these pieces of equipment. And this was called stippling and what they would do is basically end up dipping it into their coloring that they wanted it and then they would end up doing the stippling on the on the wood so it gave it a look of grain to it so you'll notice this has a different grain than the door over there now mrs raley was also very famous for her butter her butter was a del very delicious butter and um, she everybody had a different butter mold that they used so when people went looking for mrs raley's butter they would look for her mold so this would be what the butter would go into they would fill this in but notice at the very top, there is a mold. Mm -hmm. So they, that would stamp the mold picture onto the butter, and they knew that that was Mrs. Raley's mold. I can't tell you what her mold actually was, but these are examples of a couple of butter molds. Okay? Oh. Notice the, the vanilla bean in the sugar. So that would fl flavor your, van your sugar. And then we have a apple peeler core slicer right there on the table. Notice the pie safe. It has screens to it. Mrs. Raley would end up putting any leftover food that did not have to be refrigerated or kept cool into that pie safe. And she would put her pies, her breads, leftovers that she could keep there, and that would keep the flies and the, and the mice out of it. Notice the mouse trap we have there? That's a live mouse trap. Oh wow, a little live so, mouse trap. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? That was a pretty cool little tour, huh? you know, that was awesome, you know. Hearing all them stories and all that, I can imagine the stories that this house could tell, you know. Sad about that little girl, you know. Said, and nobody said that there was any, I asked around, it says, you ever say any ghosts around here? But only those one girl said that in the playroom, it was a little creepy. Kind of felt a weird feeling in the playroom. Oh, was that little girl could still haunt this place? do all their farming.
Dewey School, that's Pioneer Day. The Dewey School Museum, History of Michigan Pioneer Education, right here. And this is a little schoolhouse, right there. So the Dewey School, 1844 to 1963, Waterloo Township District. Cornfield. Nice little brick schoolhouse. Kind of reminds me of the Gunnisonville one that I went to. See up there, they even got the bell tower. Got the bell up there. So there's a cornfield all the way around here. And there's the outhouses, probably the boys and the girls, or, or vice versa, who knows. Well, they used to have the, still got the well pump out here. I'm sure they don't use it anymore. That's the old well. Excuse me. Oh, that kind of scared me. I walked in. I <laughs> thought it was like, I was supposed to be like a makeshift mannequin. I thought someone was standing behind the door. This is the mud room. Look at that little drinking fountain there. This is in Jackson County. Actually, Jackson County, yes. I'd Stockbridge, but it's near Stockbridge. This is Jackson County. This is where the kids would take their shoes off and all that. They can wash up. This is the, where they would wash up. Look at the Abraham Lincoln up there. There's the old chalkboard map. There's the teacher's desk. And learning books. Here's the teacher. There's the teacher. <laughs> Hi, come on in. Hi. Look at that. Got all the learning things. There's things about ducks. All about the animals and it's not very big. Oh, look at the nests. Actually, got birds' nests in here. Board, board birdhouse. Closet area. Look, they got some sleds in here. Old style sleds. Look at that one. Wow. And then there's George Washington. Oh, look at the like the Huckleberry Finn hat. <laughs> what do you think? Is it me? Lunch pails, look at that. That was their lunch pails. Uh, ice skates. A stove in the middle of the room. Used to heat this place. Actually, they got it fired up now. You can feel the heat coming from it. Bell's Common School Charters. The desks here. Look how small they were. I said, think about it. it all grades are still here. All of them, you can see where people's cards and they and initials on the desks.
Let's see, look at that. HP plus DW. That painting. So the old schoolhouse and the kids with the sled. According to this, it doesn't look like that cornfield existed back then. It's like a forest. Oh, and they even got the old dunce hat. Dunce cat. Look at that. Yep, I'm a dunce. These seats back here were for like the older. It's like the high school or whatever. I said all grades went here. You know, it's like when you see that uh, after you got so old that you can be sitting here, these are probably kindergartners. Look at how small those ones were. It's best here, it's got the old ink well. See, that's where you should put your ink. You oh, can't open it. Oh, actually, you put it aside there. Put your ink in there. Uh, got a bunch of pictures of the actual teachers that taught here. Look at that. Oh, that guy there looks like Mr. Wilson from Dennis the Menace. Class pictures there. Kids that are here. Said, see? All ages went here. Look at the old pictures in this. They got picture albums here. Old pictures from back then. And A bunch of the ink wells. Yeah, the, not the ink wells, but I mean the, the things they used to write. You see, you see to write. A bunch of feathers and pheasants and all kinds of birds. Teachers even ringing the bell. Look at that. Hear it? She's ringing the bell. It's time for school. <laughs> That's how we did it. These old books here. Can you imagine how many kids have read these books? Through the years. It's just incredible that they save these kind of stuff. There's a school bell again. Lady was just telling me about this place. So this, this is in the original schoolhouse. Actually, the original schoolhouse was like a little log cabin up the road. And then they built this uh, on this property. They built another school, and then the floor fell in, and then they built this one because the original one didn't have a bell. Uh, bell you know, the, the bell. So you know, so it doesn't have the bell. So this has been built a couple times in 1850. The 1884 was that little schoolhouse. There's a drawing of what the log cabin one looked like. That's what the log cabin one looked like. That doesn't exist anymore.
that's about it here for the uh, water hole. days, you know, and everything was actually very fun. I was glad they came out with that. You know, I love coming out to places like this little museum place. Um, usually you ever hear about coming out, it's over here by Stockbridge uh, in Jackson County on Grass Lake. This is a great place to come to check it out, you know, all these historical buildings and everything. Exactly the kind of stuff I love coming out to do. So if you like this video, hit that like button. Share, subscribe, any comments for me? Any comments appreciated. Any ideas for me to do? Let me know. I just might show up and do it. So until next time, my fellow travelers, I'll see you around the mitten.